Hello everyone, my name is Salim Jan, Alan Sabir. I'm one of the color stats at Toxie United, and welcome to a three-part series on color correction and color grading. We're going to break down my workflow in each episode, step by step, starting with some of the basics and finishing with some of the more advanced techniques that I use in my processing. In this episode, we'll talk about the tools that are available to you in DaVinci Resolve, water color wheels, curves, how to read a waveform, and other basic adjustments that can improve the look of your footage. Welcome to Resolve, everyone. If this is your first time, you may want to check out our workflow tutorial to get you started on importing and setting up your sequence settings. We'll make sure to include a link below this video. Here, we'll go over our color wheels, primary wheels, and log wheels. We'll talk about our curves, contrast curves, hue, saturation, luminance curves, and how to read our waveform, plus some of the secondary adjustments that are available to us. Let's start with reading the waveform. On the left, you can see numbers from 1023 to 0, which represent our luminance value of the clip. Being above 1023 will indicate that we're clipping the highlights and being below zero will tell us that we're crushing the blacks. The waveform very much represents the contrast of your clip. The more it's stretched out, the more contrast you have in your scene between the black and white levels. Our goal is to always keep the waveform balanced and avoid losing information in the brightest part or darkest parts of the image. Next up are the color wheels. Primary wheels break down into lift, gamma, and gain, which are parallel to our shadows, midtones, and highlights. Let's start with the lift wheel. If we adjust this, we can see how it affects the blacks in the image, but it also bleeds into the midtones. Gamma takes care of the midtones, but it spills into our black and white level adjustments. Same goes for the gain. It adjusts the brightness or part of the exposure of the image, but it will also affect our black and midtone points. There is also an offset wheel. That wheel is designed to adjust the entire waveform. We can call these adjustments as general because they don't target specific part of the waveform as much as the log wheels do. Let's move on to that next. If I push or pull the shadow wheel, it will target the shadows and black points only without affecting the midtones. Same goes for the midtones and the highlights. The adjustments and the tools are targeting specifically that part of the waveform, the mid range or the highlight and the white point range without affecting anything else. This page will allow you to finesse your contrast and dial in exactly what you're looking for. Next up, we can look at the curves. On the first page of the curves, we can find our contrast curve. If you have worked with stills before, this is very similar to that, as you can find your black, mid, and white point, and adjust accordingly. What makes coloring so interesting is that a similar result can be achieved many different ways. You can adjust your contrast and get a similar type of levels using wheels or curves only. The trick is to find what works best for your needs. Personally, I think being able to combine the two together gives me best results. You might be asking, when should you know when to use which tool? The answer to that is that it depends on what you're looking to achieve. Think about the results you want to get and pick a tool that suits that best. Try different things, different techniques, take risks, be bold, and make lots of and lots of mistakes. Doing so will help you learn and get a better grasp of processing your files. Next, let's talk about the hue versus hue curve. This tool allows you to target specific colors in your footage and adjust their hue and colors. Hue versus saturation allows you to adjust the saturation of your targeted color. And hue versus luminance adjusts the brightness of your colors. However, a lot of 8-bit cameras fall apart very quickly when applying this curve. Keep that in mind when you're shooting on set and trying to decide the luminance of your color in post. And finally, luminance versus saturation. This curve uses luminance to adjust the saturation of your clip. We find the best advantage of this curve is to use it in your black and white points to smooth the transition between your black levels and the color cast that we apply into our shadows to separate them from the midtones. You can also adjust some of the basic settings using the tools below our color wheels. Things like saturation, contrast, hue, temperature, 
and other settings. The point of these tutorials is to give you enough information on all the tools and for you to find what works best. Thank you all for watching. I hope you found this episode useful. So good luck and have fun with your colors. Stay tuned for episode two as we will be coloring a clip and going over a step-by-step -step workflow discussion.